have time for your meeting with Sir Humphrey, Minister? Uh, yes, yes, fine, fine. What's it about? It's the proposed visit to the, visit to the Word Processing Conference in Brussels. Ah, the Word Processing Conference. Ah, oh, Humphrey, you'll be pleased to hear that I've changed my mind. I shall be going to Brussels after all. You're resigning from the Department of Administrative Affairs. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm talking about this word processing conference. Oh, I see. But I would like to see Brussels for myself anyway. Why? Why not? Why not indeed, but why? <laughs> I'm a curious person. You certainly are, Minister. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I've been a little hasty. I found your arguments on behalf of Brussels thoroughly convincing. Uh, Minister, I've been reflecting on your views, and I find much truth and wisdom in your criticism of Brussels. No, no. Now, you've implied that it is corrupt, and no, you've no. opened my eyes, no, Minister. No, 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 Humphrey, Minister, please. Now, Humphrey, it is please. you who have convinced me. No, Minister. No, no, I, I am now convinced that Brussels is full of dedicated men, all bearing a heavy burden of travel and entertainment. They need all that luxury. The odd drinking. <laughs> Caviar and champagne, private planes, air-conditioned Mercedes. Well, it oils the diplomatic wheels, you know, Humphrey. Mm. Snouts in the trough. That is not an attractive phrase. Oh, I'm <laughs> so sorry. I can't think where I picked it up. So we'll all go to this conference in Brussels, shall we agree? Yes, sir. Yes? Is your change of heart about Brussels entirely to do with my argument? Yes, of course, dear. It wouldn't have anything to do with the rumour that you've been offered a post in Brussels yourself. Humphrey, that thought is not worthy of you. There is such a thing as integrity. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Corbett, you can't let someone like Cor... <clears throat> you simply can't let someone like Corbett loose on the department. Be disastrous. I mean, everything one says to Corbett appears in the sun the next morning. <laughs> Glad to know you read the sun. Oh, but you... <laughs> yes. You really must stop it, Arnold. I implore you. I'm not the Prime Minister. No, but it is really you who arranges the reshuffle, though, isn't it? Hmm? Oh, no. If there's an appointment the PM is really set on, the Cabinet Secretary must reluctantly acquiesce. But, I mean, you, you do keep your hand on the tiller. <laughs> Well, if Hacker decides to turn down Brussels, it will make it a lot easier to keep Corbett away from your department. Well, I'm afraid that's just the trouble. I think he's going to take Brussels. Oh. Yes, I know. He says he believes in the European ideal. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. <laughs> but you know how it is with politicians. They get taken in by their own speeches. <laughs> this is partly your fault, you know, Humphrey. But... You've blocked Hacker time and again. Only in the interests of good government, um, Arnold. Oh, quite. <laughs> but what you really need now is for Hacker to have a big success in the next day or two. A big success? Yes. <laughs> in the next day or two. <laughs> <laughs> that would give me, give the PM, a very good case for keeping him where he is. Then we might be able to move Corbett to uh, employment. Oh, why well, is Fred definitely going? Yes, he keeps falling asleep in cabinet. <laughs> I thought they all did. <laughs> yes, but not while they're actually talking. <laughs> <laughs>